G'day folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to part two of this video series on oil. If you've missed part one, I would recommend you go back and have a look at part one. That is where I fitted a larger clutch cover to the 500, actually not to the 500, to a 501, to give it some more capacity. Then come back and watch this one, where I'm going to talk about the analysis of the oil. Now you can see here behind me, I've got a whole bunch of reports back on some oil samples that I had sent off. So today we're gonna to get down into what all the numbers mean, trying to answer the question, does more oil mean a longer service interval for the 500? I will just say that oil is a massive can of worms, everything about it. I am not an expert, but I have spoken to a lot of people, so I've got quite a few bits and pieces of information which I'll, I'll try to share with you and try to make it simple for, for my understanding. As a quick recap of what this experiment entailed and, and how it all came about, a mate of mine bought a, uh, a larger clutch cover from Adventure Bike Components. They're based in Queensland, I think. A clutch cover allows for up to 1600 mils of oil in the 500, 501 engine. Standard capacity is 1.2 litres, so increasing to 1.6, that's a fairly big increase, I would say, you know, up to a third more oil, up to another 400 mils of oil in there. So the hypothesis that I wanted to test was, does more oil allow for a longer service interval? Now we all know what KDM say about the service interval on the 500, it's ridiculously low, but it's not based on adventure riding, it's based on competition. Now, to clarify one thing, in the previous video, I spent a bit of time on the claims of the extra oil capacity that uh, the, the cover allowed for. They claim up to 33% more oil. Um, I wasn't convinced on that due to how it was measured. The way that I measured, I mean, it's not a scientific thing. It was basically done in my shed and I was trying to hold the bike level. As you will probably know, just a very, very slight lean either way off vertical will affect the level in the sight glass quite a lot. There could be air bubbles in there. So there's a whole bunch of different factors that come into whether the volume is the same at the same level. I also didn't check any, I didn't physically check any of the other manufacturers claims for their covers. I just went based on what they said. So with all of that, I will admit you can still get up to 1600 mils of oil using the Adventure Bikes components cover. So my theory was if I got two bikes the same, a 500 or a 501, and put them on the same trip at the same time, the same conditions, I should be able to you know, get the oil analyzed from each at the end, and it should be a reasonable comparison. Now that's the theory, but as you'll see, it's not quite that simple. The bikes involved in this test were a 2022 model 501, and it had about 2000 kilometers on it and about 30 hours. The other bike in this test was a 2020 500 EXC with about 5,000 kilometers on it and about 100 hours. So straight away, there is a difference in uh, the, the newness of the engines there, but we'll talk a bit more about that as we go on. The 501 had the larger clutch cover, the 500 had the original clutch cover. 501, started this test with 1600 mils of oil in the engine. 500 started this test with 1250 mils of oil. And the trip itself was a 4,000 kilometer loop. They put 54 hours on engine time on that trip. So it's a pretty quick trip. If you do those numbers, it works out to be about 80 kilometers an hour average. Uh, it was not dusty. It was not too hot. It was not too cold. Pretty average sort of conditions, pretty average sort of adventure riding sort of stuff with you know fast open, open roads and that. Some slower stuff in there, but not too much. As for the oil analysis tests themselves, I got these tests done by uh, Caterpillar. Cat SOS services. These guys are set up for lots of things around oil testing. They have an oil analysis lab. That's a service that they offer and that is super important for you know your big companies with large fleets of machinery. They need to keep an eye on machinery uh, wear and you know, component life, all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty important stuff. But it also means that, that the service they offer is also very consistent, very reliable and quite well understood. You can buy these tests from Caterpillar 
they're about $35 of thereabouts. Comes with a prepaid postage envelope. Drop a sample of oil in this little container, throw it in the post, and you get emailed the results back. Anyone can do this. You don't have to be, it's, it's not for you know, companies or anything. I ended up getting four samples done, four, four different lots of oil. So I did the, obviously the two bikes in particular that I wanted to focus on, but I also did my bike, uh, an oil sample from that bike there. And I did one of oil straight out of the container just to get a baseline, to get a reference for what that oil should look like. But the sample from my bike was taken after 20 hours and about a thousand kilometers. My bike's done about 15,000 kilometers and about 250 hours. The report that you get back from Caterpillar has a, a number of different sections. There's a sample information part, which is a, more for uh, identifying the particular serial number, the, the particular engine or the machine or the component or whatever it is. But the three sections that are of interest to us here today is the, the wear levels and additives part. That shows some particle counts for things like iron and aluminium, which may increase as the engine wears. The numbers down the bottom of this, they don't particularly change. That's more about what's in the oil already or what makes up the oil. The next section over from there is the cleanliness part. That is about particle. They visually inspect the oil. They do particle counts under a microscope. For motorcycles, that would be things like clutch plate particles. That's the type of thing that would be in this section here. And then the section above that is the condition contamination report. And that's probably the most interesting as, as far as this experiment goes, because that's the one that covers off viscosity of the oil. Viscosity of oil is basically how thick the oil is at a given temperature. You need oil that is thick enough that it creates a film between the two, you know, between two metal parts. It also needs to be thin enough that it flushes away any uh, particles that might be wearing out of bearings, etc. For a really good video on oil viscosity, what all the numbers mean, check out this video from a guy called Danger Mouse. Knows a bit about oil. And his video over here will explain what those viscosity numbers mean. Now, as I said at the start, I'm not an expert. I needed to speak to quite a lot of people to understand some of this stuff a bit better. The first person I spoke to was a guy called Barry. He's a senior interpreter at Caterpillar uh, in the lab. He walked me through this whole report what all the numbers mean, what the sections mean. Second person I spoke to was Danger Mouse. David is his real name. He's been a mechanic for a while and he now works in the mining industry. Third guy I spoke to was Mark from Adventure Bike Components. Got a mechanical background, worked in the mining industry for 15 years or so, and has now shifted to trying to create bits and pieces for us adventure bike riders. So let's dig into some results now. What I've done is, is created a single page with uh, all four samples listed on it. So you can, we can see at a glance some of the differences in the numbers that are shown. Just to recap on what the different samples were. The first column with Keith on it, that's my, out of my bike, that's oil at 20 hours. The Simon and the Kurt columns, they are the two bikes that did this trip. Simon had the OEM cover, 1200 mils. Kurt had the Adventure Bikes components cover, 1600 mils, more oil in Kurt's bike. And the reference column, the last one, is the brand new oil straight out of the bottle. So the top section of this report, the wear levels part, the numbers at the top, they're all fairly small. These are parts per million. Obviously, there's nothing in the oil straight out of the bottle in the reference column, but as the engine wears, uh, you'll see the, the numbers will fluctuate a bit, particularly around the iron and the aluminium, but they're still all, re I would say, reasonably low. Speaking to the senior interpreter, Barry, he was not particularly worried about those particular numbers. The numbers at the bottom of that wear level section, the, the, the ones in the thousands, none of those are going to change operationally. They are just uh, a reflection of of what's in the oil from the start. We'll go to the very bottom first, the cleanliness part. That's the visual inspection. That is where they are looking for foreign particles in the oil. And you can see in the ferrous debris particle count, I mean, there's virtually nothing there, right? So mine had a zero, Simon had one, Kurt had two. So there's nothing to write home about there. The section in the middle is the one that's 
of most interest. That's the condition. And this is more about the condition of the oil and any contamination in the oil. Starting at the bottom, there was a trace of water in all of those samples, which is normal, according to Barry. The infrared analysis measures the oxidation levels and sulfur, etc. As you can see by those numbers, there's virtually no difference, but it's the viscosity, and that is the key to this whole thing. If you start with the reference column over on the right-hand side, the reference viscosity for this particular oil, this is uh, Motor X 10W50 oil, the reference value is 114.8. That's straight off the manufacturer's spec sheet. The analysis by the Caterpillar guys came in at 113, so it's basically the same. But you can see as that oil ages, those numbers drop off quite dramatically. In the Keith column, that viscosity dropped to 80. And that's after 20 hours. And the two bikes that did that big trip, their viscosities dropped to 66 and 67. So why does viscosity change? Well, the main contributing factor to a decrease in viscosity is heat. The way I understand it is that as the oil heats up, that can lead to the oil particles uh, being sheared and that lowers the viscosity. If the oil is not thick enough to maintain a, a film between, the two, between two moving parts, you may get metal on metal. That's a bad thing, you don't want that. If we keep in mind what we're actually trying to test here, we're trying to see whether more oil in this engine means a longer service interval. That's what we're trying to see, okay? And when I look at these two numbers, particularly between Simon and Kurt, so Simon had 1,200 mil of oil, Kurt had 1,600 mil of oil. When I look at the viscosity numbers there, there's virtually no difference, and they are both really low. I expected to see some difference between the two bikes. I really did. I, I honestly thought there would be you know, less viscosity drop in the one with more oil. But as you can see, there's nothing. And the, this is the data. Like I'm not, I'm not making this up. This is just, this is what it's showing. In speaking to these three guys, I was trying to understand a bit more about why this might be. And like I've mentioned a couple of times, this whole topic is really complicated. There are many factors that go into oil condition. Some of the things that Mark pointed out was, are all of the engines of the same age? A new engine will run at a higher engine temp for at least the first thousand kilometers. So yes, Kurt's engine was a newer engine than Simon's engine. Are they the same models? The newer models run lean. This causes high temperatures. Do they all run the same exhaust? Have the baffles been modified or a different muffler? Do they all run the same fuel tanks as the IMS is a little more restrictive of airflow? So Simon's bike runs the IMS tank, Kurt's bike runs an a service tank. Different fuel tanks, different airflow. The clutch operation pushes a lot of heat into the oil. Slipping or dragging the clutch uh, can cause heat issues. Now that's gonna come down to rider style. I, I'm not sure how either of these guys ride. Point is there are many, many factors that go into you know, how hot the engine will get and thus what that does to the oil. So to a second question now, slightly reworded from my first one, are there any other reasons why it is beneficial to fit a larger clutch cover to the 500? The answer is yes. There are quite a few reasons actually. One is purely around protection. Standard OEM clutch cover on these bikes is cast material, which is quite soft, I suppose, if you were to drop that bike on a rock and it landed right in the middle of that cover, probably just gonna punch a, a hole straight through it. These large clutch covers do tend to be billet aluminium, so they are machined out of a single piece of aluminium. They're a lot stronger. You could probably belt it with a hammer. Not that I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna test either of these things on my bike, but they will sustain a much greater force to that cover before it suffers any sort of a problem. So if you ride in a lot of rocky terrain, or maybe you're going to do a big trip and you just want you know, the best protection possible, have a look at these sort of these billet aluminium covers. The second reason is that there is just a larger volume of oil to suspend particles in there. Adventure riding is not particularly hard on clutches or anything, but if you're going to do, say, a desert trip where you might be on the clutch a bit more, having more oil just allows those particles to be suspended in a, you know, a bigger volume. They're not going to concentrate in any smaller places it's just gonna be better for that particular trip 
in those particular conditions. Third reason to fit a larger cover is that it should just mean that your oil temperature runs cooler. Now maybe we didn't quite see that in these uh, tests that I did, not that I had an oil temperature sensor fitted, so I don't really know, but when Mark was doing the development of his cover, he did find um, about a 10 degree difference in temperature, similar conditions, highway speeds between the OEM cover and his cover. He fitted temperature sensors to the oil and to the coolant, measured all of that, and he, he saw that the oil was running cooler. Two other differences that Mark also pointed out with uh, the Adventure Bikes component cover is that it uses five bolt holes. Most of the other covers, all of the other covers that he's looked at, only use four. Uh, it's the way that they're machined. If you machine them in one piece, you can only do four. Mark has done it in two pieces, which means he can use all five holes. The second thing that he pointed out was that it does have a threaded hole at the rear of the cover for putting in a temperature sensor if that is important to you. If people are interested in the Adventure Bike Components cover, Mark is offering a discount for the first 10 people who buy one. There'll be a $10 discount on the price of that cover using the code. I'll link all that below. Thanks, Mark, for that. Grab the code down below, jump on the website and order one. You'll get a discount. Well, OK, folks, we have seen the data. We have seen some discussion of that, some interpretation. Got different opinions from different people. It's time for a conclusion. To my question. Does more oil in the 500 mean a longer service interval? For me personally, no it doesn't. I am not going to rush out and buy a larger clutch cover for this for the purposes of extending the service interval. I think there is so little oil in this engine anyway. It is a performance bike, it is a performance engine. It needs to be looked after. That's all there is to it. For me, I'm just gonna keep changing the oil on or around the 20, 25 hour mark, which I, which I have been doing, which I am comfortable in uh, doing so. Your mileage may vary, as they say. If you wanna see a really good video, which I saw just last week uh, from Adam Ryman, he talks about how to change your oil correctly, and by doing so, you'll extend the life of your engine. Check out that video over here. Well, folks, experiment is done and dusted. The results are in. Probably not the results that most people wanted to hear, but the results are the results. Anyway, it was an interesting experiment. I'm glad I went through it. I learned a lot of information about oil. My key takeaway is that I'm gonna trust that KTM and other bike manufacturers, they have done way more research in developing these bikes, these engines, about the type of oil to use, the correct weight, the correct volume, and the correct service intervals for those engines. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. This is not for reasons of uh, extending the service, inter ser service interval. This is not for a reason of extending surface service interval. What am I, a diver or a motorcyclist? <laughs>